All right, cool. I think we are live. All right, everybody, thank you for joining us. It is Wednesday, almost afternoon, and I have a good buddy of mine, Mustafa Salem, who I've known for quite some time. Um, you know, we've, uh, we've connected in, in the real estate sector, outside the real estate sector. Um, me and Mustafa definitely have a lot of synergy. We, we see eye to eye on a lot of things. That's why I think today's topic which is not the hottest topic um, in the real estate education world, but I do believe it is, is one of the most important. Um, you know, I was just telling Mustafa prior to hopping on here, you know, we both agree it's not about the, uh, you know, being a profitable business or just about being a profitable business. It's also about having an ethical business. And so today we're gonna talk about serving the homeowner, right? So it's not about, hey, 10 different ways of how to do a deal. It's really breaking it down, simple simple terms, just to, hey, what's the best way to serve the homeowner? Because, you know, at the end of the day, uh, yes, they know, we know every that we are doing this uh, to make money, to make a living, uh, but there are good ways, better ways to do things, ethical ways. And again, as you guys will see and hear about, that it's, it's not always just about making an offer on a house um, and just buying it cash. So... With that said, being said, Mustafa, thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule today. It's always a pleasure. Um, we're going to go ahead. Well, you know, I guess before we dive into, you know, serving the homeowner and, and uh, all that fun stuff, why don't you tell a little bit of, you know, about yourself, how you got involved in the real estate industry, and then we'll jump right on. Um, for those who don't know me, um, my story has got a lot of uh, details, but I'll kind of keep it short and brief. I got into real estate in uh, mid-2010 um, after I was in my mid-20s. I did the corporate thing. I hated it. Um, so I literally decided, that, you know, in the midst of a financial crash that, you know, I want to start a business and I want to get into real estate. And I didn't know the first thing about real estate. Um, at that time, there wasn't nearly as many resources as there are now. Um, and the few resources that are available were pretty expensive, but uh, kind of just jumped head first and uh, started networking with different individuals that I came across and just started uh, st one by one. And I kind of focused naturally on wholesaling when I first started uh, for a few reasons. Um, one was because I found it to be the most accessible thing that I can do. Um, money wasn't free flowing back then like it is now. There were barely any hard money lenders or the financing options that are available today and just jumped in and learned little by little and through meeting different folks, including Ryan um, along the way, uh, kind of just grew with a group of guys that um, most of them are still investing. Uh, I met you, Ryan, I think yeah. back in late 2010. Um, right that time. It was the first time we connected and we kind of just grew together into the business and everybody has their own niche and their own, uh, path um but slowly but surely started building it up and started off focusing on wholesaling i still like wholesaling um do a little bit of rehabs have some buy and holds but just really focusing on the, the wholesaling um because it brings me a lot of satisfaction i kind of like a lot of things from the financial and tactical end which is not the purpose of this call there's a lot of pros and cons that i'm sure you've heard about before ryan that i've argued um sure but related to the topic of the conversation, wholesaling is a lot more personal. <clears throat> personal it's, uh, involves a lot more kitchen table conversations, what I say, meeting homeowners and uh, connecting with them. Um, and again, from the business tactical side, yes, you're meeting with these folks to try to eventually generate a profit and do a deal. But a lot more comes with that, which I, I'm sure we'll delve into further in this conversation. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, and I'm sure you could probably relate to that. You know, we got into uh, real estate somewhat at the same time. Um, and, and regardless of, you know, if you're looking to do wholesaling, rehabbing, um, you know, being a landlord, um, at the end of the day, when you're first getting into this business, right, you could probably relate. Yeah. What do most people or gurus, if you will, talk about, you know, the life change, the money and all that stuff, which is great. And, and you know, it can be a very profitable business, um, such as, you know, other ventures out there, cryptocurrencies, et cetera. Um, but, you know, so at the end of the day, you know, when people are first starting 
in this, they're not necessarily thinking uh, about the homeowner itself. They're thinking, okay, here's a new venture. <clears throat> hey, I could do a life change, this and that. And then they're diving and they want to learn about real estate. So what do you do? There's millions of different ways to make money in, in this sector. You know, for example, you could do a lease option, a, uh, you know, an outright cash purchase. You could do seller finance. You could do wraps. I mean, subject twos, it's almost endless. Um, and, the, and I think part of the problem is when, you know, uh, people are first getting into this, myself included, you want to learn as much as possible. And then you have all this information. You're excited because you could give, you know, a homeowner that's not aware of all this, or when I say all this, all these potential options, um, and you'll just unload all this thing. Hey, we could do this, 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 and this, and this, and they are just completely, you know, just went over their head. And that's, I think that's where in the problem lies, right? You know, you could have this overzealous new investor that's anxious. They obviously, you know, want to make in the business. They want to do what's right. But it, when they meet the homeowner, where they lose is that they're presenting all these potential options, but they may not be a win for the homeowner. Are they serving the homeowner? Did they listen? Did they, you know, are they trying to uh, meet the needs of the seller? And as I mentioned before, and as I'm sure you could agree, it's not always about, hey, here's X amount of dollars for your house. There's a lot of things that can come along with it, especially from a homeowner, let's say that may be in foreclosure, right? A lot of times you hear people, people not even really involved in business and they, or sorry, real estate, and they'll say, oh, I want to get a, a foreclosure because they think automatically, hey, foreclosure, discount, great buy, and all the things that come along with it. Reality is, is that just because a homeowner is in foreclosure, and you know this, um, doesn't necessarily mean they want to sell. They could have fallen behind on their mortgage payments because they uh, they lost their job. And then all of a sudden, a, a divorce was following suit. They just can't catch up. You know, maybe they've been in this house for 20 plus years. It's their home. It's not a quote unquote house in their eyes. And, you know, someone comes knocking on their door. Oh, hey, I would love to buy your house thinking that you're the white knight in shiny armor. And they're like, what are you talking about? I've got some, you know, difficulties going on who are you? You're a shark. You know, that's, that's kind of what you could be presented with. So, you know, coming back, uh, you know, to the forefront here, I guess, what does it mean, you know, to you, Mustafa, like to really serve the homo? Um, it means a, f a few things. And I'll start if I'm, we're in a position to give advice to somebody who's getting started or maybe this is more of a refresher for them is from a business or tactical side, I always tell people, learn as much as you can and look at all these things that you've learned and experiences as tools and a tool belt. And there's a time and place to use certain tools. Um, if you, all you have is a hammer, every problem looks like a nail, but that's not always the best solution. When it comes to dealing with the homeowners, it's a similar aspect. So like you said earlier, sometimes folks will come in and bombard them with all these options. And there's an old saying, the best way to confuse somebody is give them options. Um, if you give them too much, it's, it's not, um, it's not serving anybody. It's not serving you. It's not serving them. So the way I look at it is I have a whole host of solutions for the whole, for the homeowner. And some of them are kind of from previous experience and other ones are on the fly, depending on the situation sure. and how I try to approach it is like, here's a problem. How can I best solve this problem? What are the best tools and paths to solve this problem? That doesn't always mean that it's a profitable deal for me. Um, and another aspect is being very blunt and honest with the homeowner. At least that's my style. And I find the most success with that. And I'm most comfortable with that. I can live with that. I can sleep at night knowing that if someone, I've met someone who needs help, that I've given them the best advice that I can, even if it's not necessarily in my personal best interest. Um, that being said, it starts with honestly understanding that everybody has a story. Whether they're in foreclosure or they inherited the house or it's an abandoned house or it's, you know, they owe taxes or, you know, all the common themes that we hear and usually deal with. There's a story and we for, tend to forget that. That story is... Uh, just the meme or the typical deal is, you know, Mary Smith inherited this house and Mary Smith's got her own white, you know, kids and problems in life. She inherited this house. She neglected it for a while. And now it's in foreclosure and it's just a burden on her. 
as an investor, you see that, oh, ding, 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 this checks all these boxes, let's go. The reality is that house belonged to her mom. And there's a lot of childhood memories there. And it got dilapidated, not because she's a bad person or not because she's irresponsible. It's because she has her own kids that she's worrying about. And just going to the house is an issue for her. And now, obviously, this is a made-up story, but it's a very typical story that I'm sure you've dealt with countless times, and I know I have. Mm -hmm. And so when when you're approaching these folks, you have to realize you're dealing with a death of, if they inherit it, someone died. Someone close enough to leave them something, a parent, a sibling, um, an uncle, an aunt, something like that, right? So it's a sensitive topic, even if it was five years ago, 10 years ago. It's typically a house, maybe they mean something to them or meant something to them. So when you're approaching it, you have to have the human aspect in dealing with, um, with these folks. And two, I asked them, well, where are you today? And how can I help you? And where do you want to get to? And that's kind of like my standard line, but I mean it in the sense of like, where are you today? Help me explain what the situation is from your perspective, you know, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner, and where are you trying to get to? Like, what's a successful outcome to you? Um, And I'm going to do my best to try to get you there. Now, it could be as little as giving them the best advice that I can. Like, hey, I think your best bet is to just, you know, list a house or, or go to an attorney. And if they need a recommendation, I'm more than happy to recommend attorneys that I think can help them. And I usually, there's really no one benefit to me in that, in that regard. <clears throat> um, as, and that's the beginning. And it could be as far as doing the whole deal or helping them find a place to live or helping them probate the will. A lot of folks I'm in, the middle of two as we speak folks don't know how to even probate a will how to deal with this inherited property they know they own it but they don't know how to actually own it um sometimes they don't want to ever go to the house so there's a lot of little steps but when you approach it with this human aspect you see like okay how can i help this person that's across from me get to where they want to go now along the way that allows you to make money not a hundred percent of the time but enough times where I have a gentleman right now we're dealing with, he inherited a house from his son. Now I'm a parent, you're a parent. And if you're not a parent, I don't think you have to stretch too much to imagine. Imagine dealing with, he obviously lost his son. Yeah. He lost his son. One of the things he told us was he doesn't want to go to the house. He doesn't want to see it. He doesn't want to deal. He just, he knows he has to do it. And the only reason he's dealing with the house is for his grandkids. That's it. Mm. That's it. He's a good guy. He's just dealing with it for his grandkids. And yes, I want to make money, but I'm dealing with a parent who lost their, their kid. Yeah. (laughs) That's a lot of people don't, this is, there's a human aspect to this, right? Like, you know, I, I enjoy that part of it. We both know that, Hey, to scale a certain business, if you're meeting every homeowner, it, you, you hit a a bottleneck per se. Though I will say this is part of the business and, and, and maybe call it a downfall from the aspect of, of scaling, but I feel like it's a benefit having that human aspect. Um, and that's not something that you could, you could fake either. Right? Like we're talking about doing the right thing. And I don't want people to misunderstand. Um, it's not about the right thing to try to get the deal because, hey, it's a tough market and that's what's going to go ahead and separate you, separate you. I think it's setting yourself up, positioning yourself that that's really, you know, not just a business we practice. That's who we are, right? We, we want to do the right thing. And we look at a lot of houses. We don't buy every house, as, as you mentioned. And I know you kind of glazed over a bunch of things, yeah. but I'm uh, sorry, the lighting in here is a little screwy, but... Um, you know, you mentioned, hey, I may just point them in the direction of a probate attorney. Um, and we'll dive down that uh, in a little bit as far as being resourceful. But um, as, as far as, you know, like I said, I, there's probably what, maybe 10% of the houses out of all the ones that you, that you actually maybe buy, give or take. Um, you know, yeah. we look at a lot of properties. We talk to a lot of homeowners and go on a lot of meetings. And you know what? I could, there, there's some other videos of me telling stories about this. Um, you know, there's times that I've helped homeowners. I didn't gain a cent 
And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, they may have just said, hey, Ryan, you know, just hearing your voice was a godsend. I'll be honest with you, like, that was so rewarding for me yeah. here, you know, coming from, uh, you know, a tech background when I was hoping to get hired uh, as an intern working seven days a week and maybe got a pat on the back. When someone says, hey, you were a godsend, you changed my life, or because of you, my kids don't have to be on the street and all that. I mean, that is so rewarding. Um, you know, and then, hey, listen, at the end of the day, sometimes, you know, something comes of that in the future. They told the uncle, the aunt, so, so, and sometimes it doesn't. At the end of the day, I know it feels good. I know it's the right thing. I feel like, hey, I haven't been a perfect angel my whole life, but I, I know that, you know, when I can do the right thing, and especially with doing it in the business, it's just all around. That's, that's what we stand for. I think it's a huge, a huge piece. Um, and another interesting <clears throat> thing, you know, you mentioned about like going there and, and talking with the homeowner. And, and providing them options. Um, you know, maybe you could relate to this, Mustafa. I mean, in essence, what you're saying is, hey, you wanna go there, you wanna listen, you wanna try to understand about their problem. There's times where I haven't done any research on the property and I've done that purpose. It may sound a little crazy, right? You wanna research, you wanna know as much as information as you can, but I did that purposely because I wanted to go there without having any previous knowledge that may have me think a certain way, whatever. I just wanted to go there with two open ears, I mean, at the end of the day, listen, I'm a, I'm a talker, right? It has been a challenge for me to switch gears to, hey, listen, you gotta, you want, you have to listen, you have to understand. And I really equate it to similar, I didn't tell the homeowners this, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner, don't think of this as me sitting against the table from you and we're playing like a chess game. Listen, you have a problem. I believe I have the tools to solve it. Everybody's situation is different, right? You mentioned that before. Hey, let's consider this almost like a round table. Let's put our heads together and see what we could do to come to a solution that works for everybody. And I found that that's huge. It's, and it's funny that you bring that up. That's actually one of the things I typically say to homeowners. It's like, we're not sitting across from each other. I want it, though in this conversation, we're sitting across from each other. Right. I want it to be me sitting next to you doing everything I can against this problem. Whatever oh, that problem. You vibe so good, man. And, against the you know <laughs> against the bank that's foreclosing or against this, yeah. this issue whatever you know is particular and this reminds me of actually my second deal that i ever did uh the second deal i did and this was again back in late 2010 um it this this kind of shaped a lot and struck with me a lot is where i got a call this was back in the bandit signs days <laughs> met the woman um in uh, the house was in Edison. I met her and I happened to be very, very thirsty when I got there. And it was your typical house that we see. I mean, for the time it wasn't typical for me, but now after I've seen it, it was typical, pretty hoarded house, not necessarily dirty, but she just collected insane amounts of things. We're sitting in the kitchen and I just was dying of thirst. I'm like, excuse me, I'm sorry. I had my little pad and folder I didn't know what I was doing with it, but I had my pad and folder at the time. And sure. I asked her for water, something so simple as water. And I could see like the, the dread in her face. But I didn't understand quite why at that moment. And she opened her fridge. There was nothing in it. Wow. It was like a bare fridge. And I remember I had this folder open on the table and I won't mention her name, but I told her, I just shut it. I told her, listen, don't worry about the water. <laughs> Do you mind if you take a ride with me? Because she didn't drive. She didn't yeah. have a car. She's like, why? I'm like, uh, I want to go to the store. Do you mind if you take a ride with me? She's like, uh, I got nothing to do. Okay. So right up the road was a stop and shop. I pulled into the stop and shop parking lot. I grabbed the shopping cart. And I told her, listen, go in here and get whatever you want. Fill the shopping cart up. And I'll be waiting in the car and just come let me know when you're ready. It was pretty cold that day. And she was confused. She was like, no, no, no. We had a back and forth. I told her, just please go fill up the shopping cart. <laughs> she finally went in, you know, half hour later or whatever it was. She lets me know. I go. We, uh, I paid for the, for the groceries, put it in the car took it back home and I helped her put it in the house. And I told her, listen, we're not talking about the house. We're not talking about your situation today. Let me know if tomorrow or later this week works for you. But I want to have a conversation with you where you're not stressed out. 
about what's not in or not in your fridge. And it was a very awkward, weird experience for both of us at the time. But I left. Sure enough, two days later, she calls me. She's like, hey, I want to talk about the house. And it ended up being a very educational deal. We did a great deal. We ended up helping her get a job. We got her an apartment. We helped her um, fix some paperwork. She didn't even have a social security card that she could find. Um, we changed her life. And for years, years, she would call me out of the blue after we did the deal. How are you? Did you get married? Did you have kids? How's your mom? How's your brother? She was like a friend. And it really shaped me. And the reason why I did it at the time, I'm like, I'm not going to negotiate with somebody who's literally hungry, <laughs> like literally hungry. Right. Um, and I felt good and it ended up being a good deal. Um, it reminds me of another gentleman a few years later where I sat down with this guy. We had maybe 10 meetings and he did not want to sell his house. He did not want to sell for anything, but he was going to lose it. So I begged him to come to my attorney. I begged him. I literally set up an appointment with him, with my attorney, walked all three of us in the conference room. I said, you meet him, you meet him. I'm leaving. Goodbye. And I told my attorney, just send me the bill. Don't worry about it. Just send me the bill. Right. My attorney ended up helping him out, saved his house. Um, and he didn't charge me, <laughs> but that was good. But I ended up, uh, the guy called me up after everything was done, took a few months, crying on the phone, telling me, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Like just crying, like a grown 50 something year old man crying. And it really resonated with me. And those things feel good. Now, I wouldn't expect everyone to go to that level, but at the same time, having that, that mentality and attitude, knowing that these people have issues or a lot of these folks have issues and they're hoping that you're a godsend, hoping that you're an answer to a prayer, you should take that seriously and at least be cognitive that, you know, to you maybe a balance sheet and dollar and cents situation, to them it's so very like, impactful in their life. Yeah. I mean, most people, the, the house is the most... Uh, you know, one of the biggest, if not the biggest investment that they'll make. Sorry, I'm just closing the uh, excessive light. There we go. Um, but, you know, it's interesting you said, because, you know, I don't want people to think, hey, you're, you know, we're telling these stories to, to brag. Um, it, it really is just the nature of the business. And these are just examples to tell, to kind of give them an idea of what goes on behind the scenes, right? You know, someone may see, oh, you got that deal and so-and-so. Like, I'll give you an example of the project we just picked up in, uh, actually, we just finished renovating. It's ready for rent. Um, that was about a year and a half, um, of working with the homeowner, um, you know, cold winter, you name it. I mean, I recall, uh, going to the homeowner's house. She didn't, she was even hesitant to tell me that she had no heat in the house. And I stopped by just to make sure that the pipes aren't going to freeze. And I'm like, you know, Mary, what's going on? She's sitting by the stove heating the house. So I'm like, that's not safe. And that's, a, she's like, oh, the batteries in the, in the thermos. I'm like, bat I'm like, you, you could, I, you know, it's only batteries. Give me a second, run home, whatever, get the batteries. And boom, the heat was up and running. And, you know, millions of little things like that when they were out of the house and it was also coldest uh, week of the winter, I call her up, hey, you know, do you want me to check on the house, make sure the pipes aren't broken? I go over there, there's icicles hanging from the shower. I had to turn off the water. Needless to say, there was broken pipes. Imagine if, let's say they're not there, spring came, it would have been a pool in that house and whatnot. So, you know, for them to be able to protect their investments so that they could still get some, you know, realize some money out of the deal. Um, but you know, all that was just, and, and, you know, multiple conversations and multiple things of helping back and forth throughout that year and a half, you know, and again, it's not, it's not to, to say this to impress or anything. It's really, Hey, that's, that's the nature of it. I do feel, um, that, you know, you just, when you're, when you're dealing with the homeowner, you really have to put, I guess, their needs first, even before your profit. Sounds crazy to a lot of the people, whatever, but at the end of the day, I feel if you can't do that, then you're not going to have a win-win uh, situation. We don't do one-way one, one -way deals, lopsided deals. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you another example. Um, and typically, we don't do this, right? I mean, it's not for every single homeowner. And to be honest with you, sometimes actions – uh, that I take, they don't always come out good in the end. Sometimes I'll, you know, extend an olive branch and sometimes you get burned. I mean, I'll give you an example. We, 
we, when we buy houses, especially if there's a foreclosure scenario, it's the standard operating procedure that they have to vacate the home because um, for a variety of problems that could potentially happen. Uh, with that said, there was a house in Point Pleasant, the lady really, really rough time. And you know, this is before we even had a quote unquote solid deal, but she's sitting there and has no money, can't eat. And I was like, you know what? I may get burned on this, but literally she has nothing to eat. And I'm like, okay, so I threw um, Venmo before I had anything, you know, I just got to give her, give her some money. It's the right thing to do. It is what it is. Needless to say, um, you know, it did, it did come through in the end. Um, but you know, there was a lot of uh, things that were, that happened after that. I'll give you an example. We closed on the property and we allowed her to stay for a full month after that, which again, we don't do that. We've never done that before. We decided, Hey, this is a different, unique situation. Not only that, it was, um, in the dead of the winter, she had so many, uh, boxes and items and whatever. There was actually three storage units that we filled up and I went down there rented the trucks, helped them and, you know, the, the lady and her kids and her friends um, for a whole month. Every weekend went down there, you know, and again, this is stuff that, that you don't hear about. This is not stuff that I'm saying to brag. Hey, after the deal was said and done, I could hey, it's be- it's not sexy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it could have been done, but you know what? Yeah. Again, you know that um, when, you, when you go that extra mile, when you do the right thing, uh, it's just good for all parties involved. You could sleep well at night. And um, I think, you know, I do believe in karma in that regard, you know, um, it's, it's just, it's just good for everybody. Um, you know, so, I mean, there's, like I said, they don't always end out that way. Sometimes we do kind of extend ourselves, maybe we'll get burnt, et cetera. I mean, there was countless times that we've held homeowners during the market crash to do um, workout programs. Um, probably could have made a slew of money of just like for referring these to uh, the mortgage repayment program, but you know what? Hey, if it meant that this person doesn't have to do a short sale and I could connect them with a, a person that could do a loan modification, boom, win, awesome, on to the next, it is what it is. But I mean, we've done countless of those. So, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's kind of transitions a little bit to um, being resourceful, right? So how, how is it, how can you better serve the homeowner? Well, I'll give you an example. You know, I'm a licensed agent, not just a real estate investor. So when I go to a homeowner, I don't like to just give them one option, right? Like, hey, here's a cash offer, take it or leave it. Hey, listen, I understand your situation based off of that uh, and, and what we discussed. Um, we could do this for a cash offer. If that doesn't work, hey, we could do this for potentially a terms offer. And this is what this would look like. And if that doesn't work, I am a licensed realtor. I could always list your property and this is what I could do for you here. I like to give them multiple options not to confuse them. And I don't, I don't bury them with, with a stuff that's not going to be a potential solution. Hey, there's the problem based off of that. Here's what we talked about, what we think is a good option. What do you, what do you think? Well, you know, we're putting our heads together to see what makes most sense. So um, I think, you know, being very resourceful um, allows you to be, you know, a better person to offer them or a better business, if you will, um, to be able to offer them multiple things to be a, uh, you know, as you were saying, multiple tools in your toolbox earlier. Um, and just a quick, quick example. I got a call over the summer, um, local here in White Meadow Lake. Lady called me, hey, I'd love for you to come by and buy my house cash. Meet the lady. I say, Patricia, awesome. I appreciate you giving me the time to, and, and the ability and the, uh, you know, to, to make you an offer. I'm probably not your buyer. You only have a little sheetrock missing here and you need a little updating. Um, for, in order for me to make money, I'd have to be here. Hey, it's such a hot market. What, you know, putting this on, it, it really could behoove you to get, uh, you know, more money in your pocket. Fast forward. Okay. I'd love to put it on and I'd love to put it on this weekend. And by the way, it was Wednesday. Uh, but I have this gaping hole because I, I was, I wanted to clear out to look how it would look with an open layout. I said, okay, hold on one second. Called up the painter within less than, a, I guess, a day and a half put the sheetrock, had it all painted back, all done. It was on the market, got an offer in three days. Um, you know, and so how was I able to surf her? Well, typical agents, they, you know, they may not have known to say, hey, listen, I got a painter who can get this done. You know, me having the experience, me having the guys, I was able to offer her that service, go ahead and facilitate it to meet her timeline. Um, similarly, on, on a listing I had a little bit later, everything was uh, smooth. All of a sudden we have uh, the uh, inspection report. Oh, there's pests and whatnot. Hey, Ryan, uh, this thing popped up. Oh man, what, hey, no worries. Call Lance and uh, tell him I sent you, blah, 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 blah. Boom. Handle it. Done. 
easy. So again, you know, maybe somebody may say, hey, I'm new, I don't have all these resources. Hey, listen, you go out there, you network, you find the right people, the people that share the same, you know, uh, ethics and morals that you do, and you bring them on, on your team. And that way, when, you know, you're meeting sellers, you have, uh, you know, you know, a variety of things that you could come to the table with. Absolutely. I mean, and connecting with other, one of the things that benefited me, I think both of us early on was there was this group of folks that we would always kind of connect with. And there was always an answer or multiple answers there. If you just reached out to the group, I mean, if I have ever, you know, if I have things up in your neck of the woods and I don't know, you're my first call. And even if you don't have the answer, you probably know how to get it if I already don't and uh, vice versa. Um, Absolutely. And sometimes just going the extra effort of just making an extra call, doing a Google search. It's incredible. Like I've, literally have two folks right now that we have under contract. The biggest thing that I did took a burden off of them was nothing more than going on the surrogates website and emailing them the form. It's a one page form. It's that simple. Um, now there's more that comes with that with experience, but from their eyes, this was a huge discovery. And to me, it's everyday stuff. Absolutely. It's a Google search. It was Correct. a simple Google search. Right. Um, it was nothing uh, incredible. Um, uh, that same, one of those same folks, they were missing a death certificate for their father. They couldn't find it. Simple thing is, okay, did you call up the funeral home? Called up the funeral home, they had extra copies. But to them, that stopped them from dealing with the house, and they're about to lose it over literally a simple phone call. Right. That they didn't know to make. Now, exactly. I couldn't make that phone call, that specific phone call for them, but it wasn't hard for them. They had, you know, they know, knew the folks at the funeral home. Um, it was simple. So just having these solutions sometimes, it's not this big grandiose thing. Now it helps to have a network and contacts and, you know, a carpet guy and a paint guy and a pest guy and, you Absolutely. know, work out. Those are all good. But even if you don't have it, I don't have a contract to that. I would want to send to Morris County, but I know you got plenty. <laughs> right. So I never stress it. <laughs> it's right. So you're leveraging your resources. And, Absolutely. Right. And, and so, I mean, you pretty much become a, fa a facilitator, right? Like to you, you do Absolutely. that every day. You may be checking the surrogate records and you know, it like the back of your hand, but obviously with these homeowners, it became a roadblock. And, and unfortunately when there's a lot of stress, like, especially like foreclosures, for example, you know, you hear the common thing, why would they sell at a discount? Why would they sell to you? They can get more money. Well, if you don't understand what, what the timeline uh, of the foreclosure is, if you don't understand the process, if you don't understand all the intricate details and the emotions involved and, and really how it affects the family and the individuals of somebody going through foreclosure. I mean, the reality is, is that, you know, foreclosure timeline on average now is what, two, three years, um, you know, uh, in New Jersey. I mean, it yeah. can fluctuate depending on, you know. Who how knows what happens, but yeah, sure. it takes a right. while. Let's just say that. <laughs> right. So, you know, listen, it's not something that just happened overnight. And, uh, you know, a lot of times when the stress gets to be too much, the homeowners do nothing. They put their head in the sand and they do nothing because they don't know what to do or they're panic or they're frozen. And therefore, someone like us who just can give them that number, that phone call, that right contact, um, it's just enough sometimes to give them that comfort that someone's in it with them, someone's got their back, and that they're going to make it to the finish line. They just need that confidence. Um, it's just a little handhelding. And, um, you know, similarly, if you're talking to homeowners that seem to be a lot in the probate scenario where, you know, they're, they're inheriting properties, I can guarantee you most people have no idea about the probate process and what, what's involved, what's necessary. So again, that's where, uh, you know, you would become the facilitator and be resourceful. Hey, you should link up with three other attorneys, probate attorneys and say, yes, you know what? It can be a little bit of a convoluted process, but I got three attorneys that are excellent in this area. Hey, take a look, research them, pick one that you like, and they'll be able to get this and take care of all of it. And it'll be no stress on you. So, um, you know, you to go back to your point before we uh, move on is uh, you said that a lot of folks, I was like, why would these folks sell for, if their house is worth 300, why would they sell for 150 or 200 or whatever the number is? Yeah. Um, 
I've heard these comments countless times in my social circles that are not real estate investors have been Correct. and that, called that's that's what I'm referring to mostly yeah, when that, like, yeah, to, yeah. For sure. and I've been called things that I'm not very uh happy to hear and I kind of take it personal primarily because um of the topic that we're talking about like I know how I am with these homeowners and it's easy from the outside in sometimes to see it's like oh well you quote unquote ripped them off or um you didn't do them a service. You're just lying to yourself. And I've heard those things before. And I, I take it very seriously. I take it personal. Um, one of the common things that I tell folks is it's easy to be from the outside in and saying, well, the house is worth X. Let me sell it for Y, which is basically puts money in my pocket, but quote unquote takes money out of their pocket. The reality is, at least the folks I deal with, a lot of them are faced between a rock and a hard place is get nothing for your house or change your life. And change your life may be painful by selling their father's house that they swore they'd never sell. But they have no choice because the alternative is lose it. Or um, get the money to be able to live in a decent place. I have a woman that I dealt with. Um, well, she's my age, yeah, so it's a woman. She's homeless. She was homeless. But about two houses from her. But she was homeless. She lived in Boston. The houses were here in New Jersey. Finally found her. It was a crazy story of how we found her, but that's for a different time. She was a homeless woman with two houses, which is kind of an oxymoron when you think about it. But she couldn't even bear to come to New Jersey, much less to go to the houses. And she was inches away from losing it. Um, now, did she get, you know, the most amount of money? No, but the alternative was not get anything. She, when I met her, she was literally homeless. By the time we finished the transactions, um, obviously the main part was buying the houses and helping her out. And she didn't have a ID, had to help her get an ID. It was a long story, but last I spoke to her again, spoke to her long after the transaction, it was two years ago. She has a job, she has money saved, um, she has a phone, <laughs> she's going back to school. Uh, her life changed. Had I not got involved and did it the way we did, she'd probably still be homeless. Like, I mean, I don't know what her future holds held, but she'd probably still be homeless. Um, when you look at it that way, at least in my personal opinion, it, you have the opportunity to impact someone's life tremendously. Um, as long as you do it ethically and are clear, it could be genuinely more than a win-win. Like I think she made out a lot better than I did. Her life changed. I made some money, but her life changed. And I told her honestly, I'm like, look, I, I don't have to do this deal with you. And if you don't like me, don't do it. J do something with someone else. Just don't. Don't lose it. Yeah. Don't lose this. Yeah, yeah, I said the same. And so the interesting thing is when we're talking to people that are not in the real estate or not or don't understand the business, it's very easy for them, the outside, to, to look at it for the example you gave, right? It's worth three. Yes. They sold it for 150 or two. And you go, oh, my God, like, what are they thinking? They, it's such a hard market. They could have put it on. What they fail to realize is that there was many things that happened in between that time. Let's just say if it's a tax foreclosure. Tax yeah. foreclosures about, let's say, three-ish years, give or take. Well, they've tried for months and months to borrow money, to get maybe that extra job, to sell certain things. Maybe they caught up a little. Maybe they, you know, staggered around a little bit, and then something else happened. Now they've gotten a little further behind. And now, okay, well, I have to decide, am I going to go ahead and cash out my retirement savings? So they do that, and maybe they almost get up to par or, or you know, it buys them a couple more months. And before you know it, they've exhausted all their money. They've exhausted all of their resources. Uh, maybe, you know, family member, friends, et cetera. Um, they're at the point where it's okay. You're either going to unfortunately lose a house to a tax foreclosure who are ruthless. I mean, as you know, with the latest uh, legislation, they're trying to prevent us from helping the homeowner. They feel that it's acceptable to steal the houses from these, these homeowners. So they're approaching us. Uh, at the 11th hour sometimes and basically saying, look, you're my, I don't even want to say, you know, I say we're typically a plan B, 
we're really like plan B, E, whatever. Like they've went through most of these. Now they're faced with, okay, I need somebody who can come in. Uh, in which case, obviously, you know, we can help facilitate it. If it's something that's of interest and it's a, and it's a mutually beneficial scenario to move forward, uh, sometimes we can't help them for a variety of reasons. But, um, you know, unfortunately, they, a lot of what goes on behind the scenes is not known to, uh, you know, these people not in the business so that they don't get it. Um, and, and, you know, I could show many, many examples of, yeah, hey, look on paper, looks like we did pretty well. Let me show you what really went on. Look at how long we worked on this. Look at how many hours we did. Oh, by the way, when we were fixing the house, yeah, that was a $40,000 surprise. And at the end of the day, here's what we sold. And if you hash out all the hours and all that, it's a, you know, it's not uh, at probably what it seems to be, you know, that we'd be sitting on a, on a yacht and uh, <laughs> private islands and stuff. Yeah, um, exactly. But, and, and that, and that's before you factor in the rehab costs and that's when you factor in the, the typical real estate investor stuff that you see, you know, when you buy it for a hundred and sell it for 300, it's typically not a $200,000 profit. But you know what, at, at the end of the day, um, as long as I know I did the ethical thing and as long as the homeowner feels and knows as well, that's all that really counts, you know, because yes. at the end of the day, if they could have gotten more money or if they did have another uh, solution or option, of course they would, they would entertain it. They've come to us and we're pretty much there to help facilitate in, in tough times. Um, and obviously with these types of scenarios, you know, higher risk, um, you know, it's all relative to the investment that's made. Um, One but, thing I'd like to add to that is depending on how you source your deals and the kind of marketing you do, but all of us have done it. And you can typically tell a lot of times from the initial or second full conversations, it's like, oh, this is someone that wants to get retail or close to retail. And I tell them, us speaking to each other is a waste of time. <laughs> You know, I'm not your guy, just like you yeah. said to that woman, I'm not your guy and you have better options. Um, and then those are those folks. And the reason why I bring that up is because 99.9% .9 of the houses don't mean anything to me because I'm in the business of finding, you know, houses with particular situations, houses with that have, you know, an upside potential for me. So that's my business hat on and that's the things I'm targeting. So these folks that we do end up doing deals with, typically, they're not stupid. They're not living in a cave. They have phones and Google and just as much access to information as all of us. And they know there's not anybody that I've met that doesn't know the housing prices have gone up in the past year or year and a half. That being said, if they didn't want to deal with you, they don't need you. They don't need me. <laughs> There's no reason for them to have a conversation with us. Um, there's no shortage of people reaching out to them to provide them real estate services, whether it be mortgage companies or realtors, attorneys, so on and so forth. Um, so when you are dealing with these folks, a lot of times, especially the ones that end up being deals, getting the best price is not the best, is not what they're actually looking for. They have other reasons. Now they may compete with you and another investor, but now you're talking about 69 cents on the dollar versus 70 cents on the dollar. But they're still leaving a third of that spread, quote unquote, on the table to try to um, just solve a problem that they have. They know they're not going to get full retail. They know it needs work or their problem doesn't, makes it difficult for them to get, I guess, quote unquote, full value. Um, I mean, so you could probably yeah. relate to this. Sometimes it's not even about the price. Like no. the first house I ever bought, um, it was a foreclosure scenario. They, 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 honest to God, the price was was irrelevant. And I've told this story multiple times. Um, it was a divorce situation. Um, the husband and wife were not fond of each other. And um, the challenge was where are they going to go live, right? They had pets and kids and terrible credit and a foreclosure. So, hey, that's great. Either Brian buys the house or it goes to foreclosure, but where are we going to go? In both cases, we have no place to go. Well, we enabled them to get into what's called, it was at the time, I don't know, but Knowles Gardens. And I'll be honest with you, it, it was a friend of a family who helped facilitate it. I'm not sure how they made that happen, um, but they did. The team worked together. They got that accomplished. At the end of the day, even the, uh, the ex-husband, 
mind you, upon first phone call, he said, hey, basically go after yourself, right? Yeah, I get it. It's a tough scenario. Again, foreclosure scenario. Yeah. It's a random call um, and he couldn't stand the wife. So it looked maybe as if that I was affiliated with her. Yeah. Fast forward to the end of that transaction. He said, he called us up and said, listen, I just want to let you know that you and your mother are angels. Because of you, my kids are no longer going to be on the street. They have a place to live. I can't thank you enough. So we go back to saying, hey, about the rewards and, 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 and hearing things like that. So think about it. I bought my first house in the local uh, community here, which was cool. I had equity in it. Cool. And to hear that on top, you know, was just like, wow, that was, that was the realization to me, you know, I was still a corporate world at the time. And I said, wow, that's not only can this be monetarily rewarding, but something like that, having that much impact on somebody's life was just a game changer. So, you know, at the end of the day, again, I'm, I don't want to sound like, Hey, we're a philanthropist. We, we, we obviously do make a living during this, but I'll never forget. And we could wrap up uh, with this Mustafa, cause I know we're coming sure. to the end of the time. Um, I'll never forget what somebody said to me um, when I was first getting into this business. It was 2000, maybe six or seven. Um, someone was nice enough to hop on a phone call when I was just learning the game from the rich dad, poor dad forums and all that. But I was, I was eager to learn this stuff and, 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 and implement it and stuff. And I remember the lady on the phone goes, you know, you eat, I don't know why she said it. She's like, you East Coast guys. And she wasn't saying me per se. I guess it was probably through yeah. conversation or whatever. But she's like, you all have dollar signs in your eyes. You have dollar signs in your eyes. And that kind of st stuck with me because that wasn't my attention to, hey, how am I going to take advantage of people? I was sold on the, hey, real estate could be a, a, a game changer for you. I happen to like real estate. And I was excited to get involved. And I was excited to be able to, uh, you know, provide a win solution for a homeowner in a, in a crappy situation. And obviously all, um, excited that, hey, this could be a potential wealth building, uh, you know, avenue. So I all around, but I remember when she said that, I said, that's interesting because I would never want a homeowner to feel that. And I said, as difficult as it may be, let's say, you know, someone's got to eat, they got to like real estate, yeah. like you got to have listings if that's your primary job. But you have to keep things in perspective and you have to say, listen, my primary focus on this is to do what's right for the homeowner and everything else will follow, you know, behind that. It's not, how do I profit first and who cares about the homeowner? How can I make sure that this is a win for them? And obviously step two, does it make sense for us as an investment deal? Okay, awesome. And so I think we pretty much share similar mindset on yes, that. Stop up. Absolutely. Um, yeah, we'll wrap up because I know you got a busy day. We got uh, approaching our hour. I got to head out to uh, today's closing walkthrough. But um, anything you want to uh, end off on that we didn't cover and um, anything else you want to share? Um, just something I just want to repeat. It's just it's a people business, especially unless you're buying from the auction or the ML. You're right there, man. Yeah, I don't know what happened, but thankfully it didn't shut down. I would have ended a little prematurely. <laughs> um, Again, it's a people business, um, unless you're buying from the auction or from these websites right. or whatever. Yeah. It's a people business and you're impacting people's lives. I, I always tell the sellers, I'm a for-profit company. I have every intention on making money if I can. But that doesn't mean that's the only thing. I also have kids that I want to know that I'm feeding them and providing for them in an ethical manner. Um, so... Just remember, it's a, it's a people business and everyone has a story. And if you're speaking to them, it's probably not the best time of their life. So just be, be, be cognitive of that and be human about it. Yeah. Go with, go with two ears, you know, um, listen, try to understand. And, uh, you know, like I said, when I went on those, those appointments to, to just kind of go with a clean slate well, that might be nerve wracking to some people, you know, especially starting yeah. off, you want to go as geared with as much info. I get it. Uh, but for some reason, I was just kind of like a little, I don't want to say hack or a little tweak that I just figured, you know what, I'm going in here with nothing other than knowing that her name is so-and-so or his name is so-and-so and they want to sell. Hey, let me know. Tell me about, that's what I literally say. Tell me about your situation. Cause I know every single, every, every homeowner situation is different. So to add to that, I, I, another thing I like to do is I look at the house second. A lot of us, when you're getting started, you want to go there with your tape measure and do a home inspection, basically, and then sit down and talk to them. Is I, 
I do that after the conversation. Sometimes I do it on a subsequent conversation. The reason why I do that is I tell them, I'm here for you. I'm seeing how I can serve you. The house is just, it's a house. It's a bunch of wood and a pile of dirt. <laughs> Whatever is wrong with it, we can figure it out. Right. But your situation is more important. And I think that's what, that's what I'd like to wrap off to. It's a human business. And um, yeah. Just yeah. <laughs> no, I love it. And, and I, it's interesting, right? Because like, I'll just, we'll wrap up with this is that, you know, hey, why, why did we spend t- you know, time on this topic? And, you know, as uh, educators and, and people, you know, in this space, know we've been doing this for some while, they, they look to us for sometimes some guidance. Hey, listen, I learn every day as well. But I feel that if we could properly educate those that are coming up, it's better for the business as a whole. It, it allows them to better serve homeowners. Um, and, it, and, and those are the type of people that I want to be affiliated with. You know, I want to be surrounded by that. Hey, if I'm partnering with somebody, I know that they're going to have the same standards and, and, you know, that, that I uphold in my company and they will do the same. So with that said, I hope everybody found this useful. Um, here as always, um, always, always willing to help and facilitate. You got any questions or whatnot, reach out. And, uh, with that said, again, Mustafa, thank you very much. No problem, man. Um, want to get a hold of you? Um, how can they get a hold of you? Uh, best ways, uh, Instagram, probably, uh, the original move okay. on Instagram. So move is an old nickname of mine that I just kept. Uh, that's probably the best way to get a hold of me. Okay, um, cool. Well, check them out, guys. And uh, as always, stay well, stay healthy, and uh, we look forward to uh, to the next one. All right, take care.